Well, the weekend's winding down, so I'm spending a Sunday evening at the range. It's working on sighting in a hunting rifle that I just picked up and take a break from the recoil of the 350 Remington Magnum. I decided to plink around a little bit with the 3220 barrel on the contender again. I loaded up another batch of the same ammunition, same bullet, same powder charge. Uh, I did look up online and I figured out the right direction to turn this adjustments on this dot sight and uh, since the markings were worn I went ahead and wrote on it with a with a sharpie pen I don't know if it'll show up there which way is right I got a mosquito bite in here it's been humid the last few days and these bugs have starting to come alive a little bit but yeah I've started working on this a little bit and I uh, reviewed the target from the last time out and made the scope adjustments I brought it down about six inches and I brought it to the left about three inches and uh, just put five shots on the target. Let's go down and take a look at that and see how it turned out. Had a little bit of a water break there too. I need to get the other bottle out of the van. It's a little bit warm. It got up about 90, 92 today. It's cooling off now, but the sun is still out, but I've got the trees giving me a little bit of shade and relief from the heat, so that's not bad. I hear the, it uh, must have just landed the parachute club over there. I heard their plane buzzing around, dropping the parachutists. And I was pretty fortunate today when I showed up at the range. Uh, I don't know if people got delayed by rain and just left, but there was there were two clean targets hanging up already. I shot one of them up and uh, put up my on-target red circle here because it works good with that green dot on that thing. So yeah, it looks like this is getting better. Um, I was up here the last time out, and so I put the six down in, and I put uh, the three correction to the left in. And it looks like I might have went a little too far both ways if I want to set this for 50 yards of this load. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll bring it back to the right. Oh, I don't know. It's probably looking more like three quarters of an inch than an inch. And then bring it up about an inch, inch and a half. And we'll try that. Put a few more on the target. And we'll um, fire a few more rounds of that and see how it works. And then I'll, I might fire the, the hunting rifle a little bit more. I don't know. It, uh, <laughs> I uh, was shooting some some older stuff up that I had and uh, unfortunately sometimes old 350 rem mag brass splits the necks so um, of the ones I fired only four of the cases are still good so I can measure those and get the chamber dimensions for this this new 350 I guess this would be my this would be my fourth 350 I've got a I've got a Ruger 77 flat bolt in 350 Remington Magnum I've got a Remington 600 Magnum I've got a uh, 673, which is the throwback rifle. And then I just picked this one up. This is a uh, Model 7. It's a uh, Model 7 KS from the custom shop. It's got the Kevlar stock. It is very light. And I just picked this up yesterday. Um, I've always thought these were cool rifles. Um, I'm not real sure of the vintage. I looked up, you know, the barrel markings on the custom shop rifles are different. So it does have a B0. And that I think that was like January of... 94 if I remember right. I'm not a hundred percent sure though. Um, this is one of the ones that's got the you know the kind of um, more parkerized finish like the mountain rifle type. Um, the sights were taken off of it already and it had these bases on it already with the uh, single piece rings. I don't know if they're cone troll or if they're K&S or one of the others. Um, I did uh, manage to mount this new scope on there. I picked up this loophole. It's a uh, VX3 HD one and a half to five by 20 and boy I really like it so far. Um, like I say I've only shot uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I shot nine shots out of it and uh, it um, it's not gonna be a, a bad rifle I don't think. Um, this was the first shot I made. Um, I didn't make any adjustments and then I shot these three and I made some adjustments and shot this three and these two down here were a different ammo. These were all 200 grain core locks, I believe. And then this was a uh, 250 grain load that I had. And uh, so I think there's something to work with there. Um, I was getting a little bit uh, flinchy behind the rifle. It punched me a couple times. So it's, it's super light. I don't know what these weigh. You have to look up the specs, but it, it is super light. Um, I'm not 100% sure if that's the brown precision stock or if it's the Macmillan. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if they both made the Kevlar stocks 
for the Model 7 KSs. I've read differing things. Some people say that all of the ones on the 7 KSs are brown precision. Other people say that uh, some of them were Macmillan for a spell. I don't know what's true. You, you read things about how all of them with the leaf camo are brown precision, but then another person will say, well, no, you could get it in gray as well. Some people say you can tell by the texture, but um, I don't know. Um, I've got a friend that knows more about these than I do. I will ask him and show it to him, and uh, he can tell me if it's a Brown or a Macmillan. I wasn't 100% sure about these these uh, rings because, um, you know, I'm used to using things that are pretty heavy, and I decided to give them a try. And the way these work, they're a single piece like a band, and they go down in the base, and then the point of this torque screw here is pointed, and it goes into a indentation in the ring, and it pulls them down and squeezes them together. And then you can have some independent windage adjustment uh, with the screws into the bases as well. So that both the front and the rear are windage adjustable. So I set that up the best I could with uh, bore sighting at home. And then I brought this little sight vise out here and I don't shoot off of this. I, I never tried to it. I'm not confident that it would hold up to this rifle. Um, but I uh, brought it out just to do a better bore sight at 25 yards and get things dialed in and, and it all came out pretty good I guess the I don't know how people do this dual windage adjustment thing I mean you know it's pretty easy to figure out if the scope tube is parallel to the barrel but uh, I don't know how you evaluate if it's you know parallel to the barrel but shifted left or right um, I suppose that you know if it's if it's parallel it would show up at distance but it wouldn't show up as readily as if it was not parallel to the bore. So anyway, <laughs> I haven't made much, I just dialed a little bit of right and a little bit of up into it. I haven't played with it much more. Um, I, the glass on the scope is really good. I, I really like it. Um, I stuck this tape on here to verify that it hasn't moved while I was shooting and it, and it hasn't. I put two pieces on. This piece here is butted up against the, butted up against the, uh, ring so I figured that if the scope stayed stationary and the rifle came back it would wrinkle that tape up and it hasn't so it's looking real good um, and then I put a couple index marks on there just to make sure that uh, it wasn't rotating and it looks there and you look through it and it looks pretty good but I tell you you know with bifocals and correction for astigmatism lining up scope reticles it gets harder every year when the prescription changes <laughs> it's yeah I don't know how many times I moved this one trying to convince myself that it was, you know, and I've done the plumb bobs, I've done the flashlight, I've done the, you know, plumb the rifle stock up and use a plumb bob for the vertical reticle. I've used the window sill versus the jam. I've tried everything and I tell you, you get it where you just think that you really, really like it and you set it down and have a cup of coffee and come to it a half an hour later and, and you swear it's three degrees off, you know, so. I've gotten to the point where I get them where I think they should be and a lot of times I don't even torque them down until I get them to the range and can get them out in real sunlight and uh, you know <laughs> try it and uh, you know for a hunting rifle I suppose if uh, the way you hold it if it looks good you should be okay. Um, I don't know about uh, you know this isn't going to be a long range rifle so it's probably not worth a whole lot of worrying I would guess that you know 350 rem mag is is kind of a close in cartridge uh you know 200 250 yard shots maybe but uh that big 35 caliber bullet it runs out of gas pretty quick you know you can you can get uh 37 50 3800 even you know if you zing them you know you can get almost 4,000 foot pounds at the muzzle but you know with that big draggy bullet it slows down in a hurry so um i think most everybody's seen this cartridge before but like i said uh I only had four that came out that didn't split on me, so this, you know, it's it's basically like all the other belted magnums, but it's, uh, you know, 308 length. It's a 2.8 maximum overall in 35 caliber, so it's, you know, it was the first real short action magnum back in the 60s um, in the old Remington 600 magnum, which is one of my favorite rifles, but uh, this one here I think is going to be, it, I think this one you know, for appropriate game would be my go-to because it's it's just a nice handling rifle. Uh, I haven't taken any offhand shots with it or, you know, sitting or anything, but I will. Um, I was just kind of getting it on and uh, making sure it was on the paper and stuff, and I'll start working on some loads. I think I'm going to probably work around, um, you know, the, the, the Nosler partition and maybe the 220 Spear Hot Core. Um, you know, 
250 and 220 it's a debate on these kind of like 140 150 on a 270 you know you you like the you like the energy of that 250 but you have to seat it deep to keep the magazine length and you lose powder capacity so it's uh you know roughly 60 grains of uh, 4320 under the 220 grain bullet i i've had good luck with that 220 hot core so i think i might um i've got a lot of them too so i'll probably do some load development with those in this rifle this barrel is going to be a little different than my others um it's longer than my 600 it's shorter than my 77 it's probably the same as the 673 this this and the 673 are pretty much twins other than this one i may have a lighter contour cut to the barrel i'm not sure and of course this doesn't have a vent rib and it you know it's got the the kevlar stock but it's it's a very handy um rifle as far as picking it up and holding it it just feels right the shape of the stock feels right um, i'm really glad that i stumbled across it um i wasn't actively shopping for it but it popped up on the list at one of the local places i went and looked at it and decided it was a consignment gun i went ahead and bought it and uh picked up the scope at the same time and but yeah, I'm confident enough that I can peel this tape off here. Now this scope seems to just stay in place just fine. We'll shoot it a bit more, bang it around a bit more, but uh, it's got a decent appearance too. You know, I, I kind of like the, the matte finish. Um, let's see, I, I'll figure out what the stock is. Like I, said, I, I don't know if it's a brown precision or if it's a McMillan. So I, I do, like I said, I have friends that know more about these than I do. I will take it in and have them give it a gander and see and uh, I'll continue to evaluate those rings. I haven't put anything really super punishing through it yet, but it, it hasn't moved as of yet, so I, I think they're probably fine. I'll check the torque on the, the cone screws when I'm done. But like I said, I you know I know there's a couple of vendors that make this type, you know, cone troll, C-O-N-E-T-R-O-L, I think. They have those funny white boxes with the capital letters. They make them, and then K&S makes them. Um, you know, it's a single piece ring and I was able to open the ring enough to get it over the tube here without any problem and the front one of course goes over real easily and then the, you know those set screws pull it right down into there and pinch on it but uh, this does have kind of the same limitations as my 600 though with the uh, magazine length I have a couple of things with a little bit bigger bullets that they're not gonna run I've got some custom loaded stuff from a custom loader in here in Michigan um, up in Bay City back in the day. I picked these up a long time ago and I've ran some of those. These are a little bit warmer than some of the stuff I've been shooting today. These are 250 grains and about 2,400 feet per second. So it's enough to get your attention. And I've, you know, see I labeled this brass. These are, some of these were running my 600. I could shoot these in this rifle. I would just have to single feed them. I'm dropping stuff on the ground now, but there, that's that's with that 250. Those are seated too long to feed out of the magazine on this rifle. They will feed in my 77. Um, it has a much longer magazine box, but these Model 6s and 600s and whatnot, they have a very short magazine box, so this is a, a no-go in that magazine. But these are a little warmer than what I'm shooting today. I've been shooting 200s and 220s that are pretty much the same as the factory loads but I think what I might do is you know I've got some of this other stuff you know like these from the past um, this is a soft point two uh, those are 200 but uh, I might pull these down and uh, maybe if I pull them down and anneal the brass I can save some of them because uh, see I've been getting it, it is very common with 350. I've seen it so many times that it's, it's just disappointing in the brass. That one's a good one. The brass isn't as prevalent as it once was. Uh, this one took a notch at the shoulder. Yeah, that, that one's got kind of an ugly... Let's see if I can get some focus here. And yeah, that one split up that way. There was one of them that's nearly perfect like a perfect split like that I think I can I can use that one for measuring bullet depth I think <laughs> it almost it looks like you, you know guys cut them with a dremel to make a tool for measuring your bullet seating depth but yeah it's disappointing when you lose the brass but out of the nine fired I lost five which that's not surprising 
this brass here looks like it was a little softer when it was fired and, it, and it's better, but this stuff here has been sitting around too long and has gotten hard. So I, I may, the rest of this vintage stuff that I have, I may pull it down and uh, anneal the brass and hopefully save a few of them anyway. Um, so I've, I've got a lot of this stuff. I, you know, I've got a lot of brand new brass too. I, I probably have, oh, I don't know, five or 600 pieces of brand new brass that I've been, I grab it if I see it and I've had friends give it to me and all that. But you know, this here looks like it'll be usable. You know, worst case scenario, you can form it from any of the other belted magnums. You can form it from seven magnum or 300 wind mag or any of those, um, especially the ones where that are long and the shoulder gets out past the neck would be really good. But uh, yep, that's what we're up to today. A little bit of 3220 from the contender and working on sighting in that Model 7 over there. Probably shoot a little bit more with the contender, maybe make a scope adjustment uh, for that uh, low and left that we were seeing there and uh, put a few more holes in the paper. So thanks everybody for watching. We'll catch you all soon. But wait, there's more. It's the Hot Air Jubilee in Jackson, Michigan this weekend and we got some hot air balloons launching. I only see one so far. I was going down to look at my target and there's a hot air balloon up there. So that's cool. I've never been in a balloon. Might be kind of fun. They did have one land in the backyard at my parents' house when I was younger. I was working on a model airplane in the basement and I kept hearing this noise. It was like, <laughs> I'm like, what is that? I went outside and a hot air balloon landed in the uh, kind of like empty lot beside the house, you know, pretty deep lot there. And they landed and changed out their fuel bottle and took off and they gave me a little pin because I came out and watched them. And, and uh, it was a green balloon with a white zigzag, kind of like a Charlie Brown shirt with green and white. I still have the pin somewhere. I'll have to dig that up. But hot air balloons are pretty cool. Well, I better go down there and look at that target so I can remember. Oh, there's another one that came out from behind the tree. There it is. So I don't know if they're going to do a mass launch or just a handful of people, but there's two of them. Let's walk up a little bit at a different angle. Maybe we can see some more. Hard to hold the camera and get a good steady picture with the zoom so much. I only see the two so far, but you know that the hot air jubilee was this weekend and the weather just was horrible Friday. So that didn't work out well for them. So maybe they're, yeah, you can hear him running his burner. <laughs> That's the noise I was hearing when I was in the basement and the one landed at the house. Very cool. And then there were three. That utility tower is right in the way of my picture. Hey, look at that. We're making progress. One, two, three, four, five. Looks like the scope adjustment was just what I needed. Now well, there's five more. I think I'm starting to get the hang of shooting this thing. Thanks for watching.